an oration ode upon Cromwell's return from Ireland by Andrew Marvell. The forward youth that would appear must no forsake his muses dear, nor in the shadows sing his numbers languishing. Tis time to lave the books in dust, and i the new said armour's rust, removing from the wall the corslet of the hall. So restless Cromwell could not say in the inglorious arts of pace, but through adventurous war urged his active star. And like the three-forked lightning, first breaking the clouds where it was nursed, did thorough his own side his fiery way divide. For tis all own to courage I, the emulous or enemy, and with such to enclose is more than to oppose. Then burning through the air he went, and palaces and temples rent, and Caesar's head at last did through his laurels blast. Tis madness to resist or blame the force of angry heaven's flame, and if we would spake through, much to the man is due, who from his private gardens where he lived reserved and austere, as if his highest plot to plant the bargamot, could by industrious valour climb to ruin the great work of time, and cast the kingdoms old into another mould. Though justice against fed complain, and plead the ancient rites in vain, but those do hold or break as men are strong or wake. Nature that head of emptiness allows of penetration less, and therefore must make room where greater spirits come. What field of all the civil wars where his were not the deepest scars, and Hampton shows what part he had of wiser art, where twining subtle fares with hope, he wove a net of such a scope that Charles himself might chase to Caresbrook's narrow case. That thence, the royal actor born, the tragic scaffold might adorn, while round the armed bands did clap their bloody hands. He nothing common did or main upon that memorable scene, but with his keen array the axe's edge did try, nor called the gods with vulgar spite to vindicate his helpless right, but bowed his comely head down as upon a bed. This was that memorable hour which first assured the forced power. So when they did design the capital's first line, a bleeding head where they begun did fright the architects to run, and yet in that the stead foresaw its happy fate. And now the Irish are ashamed to see themselves in one year tamed. So much old man can do that does both act and knaw. They can affirm his praises best, and have, though overcome, confessed how good he is, how just and fit for highest thrust. Nor yet grown stiffer with command, but still in the Republic's hand, how fit he is to swear that can so well obey. He to the Commons feet presents a kingdom for his first year's rents, and what he may forbears his fan to make it theirs, and has his sword and spiles ungirt to lay them at the public skirt, so when the falcon high falls heavy from the sky, she, having killed, no more doth search, but on the next green bough to perch, where, when he first does leer the falconer, has her sewer. What may not then our oil presume, while victory his crest does plume? What may not others fear, if thus he crowns each year? A Caesar he, ere long to Gaul, to Italy an Annibal, and to all states not free shall climacteric be. The pit no shelter now shall find within his parti-coloured mind, but from this valour sad shrink underneath the plaid. Happy if in the tufted brag the English hunter him mistake, nor lay his hounds in near the Caledonian deer. But though the wars and fortune's sun march indefatigably on, 
and for the last effect still keep thy sword erect. Besides the force it has to fright the spirits of the shed in night, the same arts that did gain a power must it maintain.